Alrighty, let's make sure. If I can spell. Which I can't. Alright, it looks like we're good. So, it's been a long time. Let me make sure this is all set up. And also, our good people at Facebook. I'm going to try again. To... See if I can see your comments. Uh, unless it goes through here. Hey, Video Nomad. Thanks for showing up. Give me a quick second, because I'm real bad at this. I don't stream very much anymore. I'm trying to get back to it. I'll tell you why in just a second. Um, um, um. Facebook, Facebook. Okay, Gina, I see you on there. Are you up here too? No. Okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this window for Facebook Live, and I'm going to put you over here. We can do this. I can figure this out. <laughs> and then I've got Restream. Okay, there might be a slight delay, but at least I can see you guys. Cool. Well, yeah, me too. I'm, I'm glad I'm alive and awake to uh, show up because, like I said before, I haven't been doing a lot of streaming. Uh, in fact, and, and it's a good thing, I suppose. So pretty soon I'm going to have about 52 more videos up for a quick start, ZBrush quick start up on YouTube, Gumroad, and um, what's the other one? QBrush. Uh, you can get those for free. Um, but also through here, let me see how many videos I'm up to. Let's see. MP4. Just because I'm interested. I am sitting at 251 videos total for 23 hours? That can't be right. Well, I've got a lot more ZBrush videos that I'm making for uh, my CG Master Academy course. It's six units. It's apparently 23 hours worth of content, although I think that might be wrong, but it is about 250 videos. But uh, the first 50 are going up on YouTube. That'll just be a quick start guide for ZBrush, and then I do a deep, deep, deep dive on everything else. So that's what I've been doing for the past couple weeks, at least. Cool. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Uh, hey, hey, pro. Thanks for showing up. Hey. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, so there. So let me go back to my streaming topics here because I have a few that, again, I haven't streamed in a while. So uh, one interesting one I wanted to try out was uh, this uh, person was trying to do, they had this cool horse head shape with a little um, horseshoe, and they were stamping it, and they wanted to get rid of this geometry. So we're going to cover a few topics that I think you might find interesting to kind of... Um, be able to do that in ways that are pretty clean, I hope. So let's see how this works. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create that horseshoe. So I'm gonna grab a PolyMesh 3D and we're gonna go into polyframe mode. And the reason I grab a PolyMesh 3D is because, oh, is my sound okay? Everybody good? La 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 la. Cool. Um, yes, thanks Leo, I, I am alive. Um, so we got this star here, and the reason I like doing this one is because if I'm just going to go down here and to initialize and just make it a Q cube, which I do a lot, uh, I can skip the whole make polymesh 3D step if I grab another primitive. So anyway, I also like to do a deformation unify, and here be the here be's the start of my uh, horseshoe here. So we're going to drag this over to the left, and with local symmetry turned off, I'm going to do a quick mirror mirror and weld. And then that'll be kind of the start of this thing. So I'm going to go X to go across X symmetry here. And we'll kind of tilt these in. And then I'm going to control drag these up as a copy. Let's go ahead and make that skin shader for us so you can see it a little bit better. And I'm just going to kind of mimic a horseshoe shape like so. Well, at least, um, at least kind of that last little bend here. And then these top two, I can just go through here and alt paint these with my Z modeler brush. B, Z, M. Hover over face. And we'll go to delete. Polygroup all, we'll just delete those tops. And we're gonna go to bridge, two holes. We'll make this a circle. Uh, let's say optimal server, optimal curvature, optimal re resolution. And you have to excuse me, I am, uh, I'm not exactly firing at all cylinders this morning. Although, am I ever really? Not usually. And we'll go ahead and connect these two as well. 
And this one, let's just do a spline. Two holes, spline, interactive, curvature, interactive resolution. I can have a little bit more control. That'll work. So now I'm going to go up here to, let's do a quick mirror and weld. Geometry modified topology mirror and weld, and we'll stretch this out. So that can be a horseshoe shape. Let's hit Control W, make it all one polygroup. And I can go through here and clean this up a little bit. Insert single edge loop, hold down Alt, and we'll get rid of those. So this will be our horseshoe shape-ish, and you can modify that however you'd like. If you wanted to, say, uh, flare these ends out, we could just mask. Uh, you know what, let's just do this. Let's mask a lasso, and then hold down Alt, and we'll just scale that out. This one we're going to turn local symmetry on, so we can just scale along here and then scale along here. So a little bit of a flare. And let's go ahead and bevel these edges. Uh, you know what? Also we can do poly groups by normals. And now we can hover over this and we'll just do we'll do an inset. Poly group all we'll inset this side as a region. And we'll inset this side as a region. And we'll Q mesh poly group all, but I am going to want to put both of these poly groups Actually, let's do Control Shift S to shrink. Control W. Now these are all the same poly group, and now when I hold down Shift and pull, these will all pull at the same rate. So that's something you could do. Or we can just run a bevel along this. So bevel edge loop complete. Um, what's something else we could do? I think that'll be fine. So here we're going to go down to crease. So geometry crease. Let's run a crease tolerance and let's go into dynamic here. So I'm going to hit D. It's going to activate dynamic and then we can go, I mean, I like doing it in here. So crease level of three, smooth sub div of four, a little less menu hopping. And this can be our um, cool little thing. So I'm going to go to inset polygroup ball again. Sorry, I undid it. So inset polygroup ball. We're going to inset that one more time, a little bit smaller, and then we'll do a Q mesh polygroup island, and then we'll just hold down shift and pull this back. And that will be our little bit of detail here. I think that's good enough. So uh, one thing I need to do is under deformation, mirror, we'll mirror this in the Y. And I'll go ahead and unmashed, hit X, unmashed mesh border, unmashed mesh center, sorry, and then we'll store that right in the middle of the home. Uh, now we need a horse head, so we're gonna grab our trusty dog tool dog. And I'm gonna borrow his head. So I'm gonna go in here, hold down control shift, trim curve. Sorry, buddy. And then I think that'll be good enough. So now if I go here and then subtool, append, dog head. And for the dog head, we'll go ahead and unify that. And you know what? Let's unify this thing too. There we go. And then this one, we'll go ahead and rotate this. Hold down shift, scale it down. And I think this will be a good enough representation of uh, what we're going for here. Hey, everybody, thanks for showing up. Cool, 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 cool. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Hey, Yarov. Pro. Cool. All righty. So uh, we got all this. So I'm going to hit D again on this one, and I'm going to run another crease tolerance here. And I think that'll be okay. And again, this doesn't look very pretty, but it's really more about the technique, as is my usual MO. So if I wanted to make an alpha of this, there's a couple different ways I can do that. So one kind of kind of destructive way is to... How do we want to do this first? Let's do it this way. I'm going to go to my document. So we're going to take our document over here and we'll dock it. And we'll turn off Pro and we'll say 1024 by 1024. And we'll resize our document. Hit Control N to clear our canvas. And then you can't really see this really well, but I'm going to go into Document Background and we're going to lighten this up just a, a little bit so you can see my borders. So in here we're going to have to kind of zoom out so you can see my whole document. We're going to grab our dog head here go into edit mode and then we can kind of frame this thing and then we can do a uh, alpha grab doc and that'll go ahead and grab our height information we can also do we can go out of edit mode and we can go in here and we grab our mrgbz grabber and just pull and that'll go ahead and grab a texture and an alpha height information so that's one way to do it another way is to just have whoops have the tool here 
And we, if we go here to Subtool, and we merge these down, like so. Um, if, okay, this is what I like to do. So I'm gonna hit uh, B, we're gonna go into mm, Chisel Rectangle and we're going to clone this off because I'm going to borrow some settings from here. So I'm going to clone that off and then underneath our brush menu we're going to say create and I'm going to go delete 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 everything's gone. And then I'm going to go over here to brush from mesh and now we have a piece of geometry sitting in there that when I let's say I go out of edit mode, hit control N, let's go to a sphere in edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, divide that up, and then when I, let's see, brush from mesh, there we go. Uh, whenever I tap this object here and then I drag it out, that'll go ahead and drag that off, uh, alpha as an, um, drag that object as an alpha. So as long as I have enough resolution, um, that'll be my result. So how do we, um, get rid of everything around that if we just want the horseshoe and the head separately. So like I said, there's a couple different ways to do that. Actually, there's a lot of different ways to do that. I'm just going to go over a couple. But first, get a drink. Again, everybody, thanks for showing up. Um, yeah, we can do that. Uh, let me check my email real quick. Um. <laughs> well, work on your side effects. Uh, work on your character, and just you can just listen. And if I ever do anything really cool, I'll make sure to shout it out first. This is all. Let's see. Um. Hmm. I'll have to think about that one, Yarov. <laughs> all right. So let's see. Uh, so we got this. Now, uh, okay, we're going to take this object and we're going to kind of cut it out from something. So one way to do that is if you just want to cut it out from a plane, if you go in here to, oh, you know what, let's talk about this too. Go into Plane 3D, make poly mesh, go into Polyframe. And if we go here to Texture, Import, and I'm going to grab just a concept I was working on. So if we have a texture here and we go down here to Texture Map and we load that up. So we've got this texture applied, and of course it's the wrong proportions, right? So to make them the right ones, you can go over here to Poly Paint, and you can hold on Shift and click Poly Paint from Texture, and then it'll go ahead and match the proportions of your JPEG reference. So now you have the correct size. Now it is grainy, so you could subdivide this Poly Plane up, and then do Poly Paint from Texture, or you can just turn the texture back on, and then now you don't have to worry about, you know, vertice resolution for your Poly Paint. It's just nice. It's just good. So that's something I wanted to bring up. Uh, but what we're really looking for here is a plane 3D, go into edit mode, make a mesh 3D. And then if we go over here to our surface noise, and oops, we need to export this first. So we're gonna go to alpha, we're going to grab our Z grab, and we're gonna go to uh, export. And we'll just throw that on our desktop called dog head. And then we're going to grab it in our surface noise. So a surface noise, uh, if you're not going to be using the UV portion of this, like if you know you had a building or something, we can go over this too if you want to. Um, if you're just using 3D and you go into your alpha and you grab your 3D alpha, and then you say crank that strength up and then mix basic noise down, you're gonna see it's gonna skew because my camera was off. Now I can click use my UVs and it'll be fine, uh, but just something to keep in mind if you are gonna bring in your own alpha, make sure your camera is set and then go and grab your alpha like so. So anyway, um, so right now if I do like strength, I wanna do a positive strength and um, you can also scale this down if you need to and under alpha scale, but I think this will be fine. However, when I hit OK, and then I go, let's turn off our floor and I hit BPR render. Beep, 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 beep. Obviously, it's going the wrong way. So we got to go in here and we can do a flip horizontal. Now it's going the right way with positive noise. We can hit OK and we get BPR. Now, if you hit BPR and you don't move your object, ZBrush doesn't read a surface noise change as 
uh, a change it needs to worry about. So it's going to borrow the previous render. So if you go over here to render, 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 render pass, it just replugged in the original sunken uh, shadows here to my bumped out version. So I got to move this a little bit and then hit BPR and then it'll update. So this is the result I'm going to get. Now I can go back in here and we can go to uh, edit and this little focal shift right here, if I drag this up, uh, not focal shift, offset. If I drag this offset here, you're going to see a little red line and that's basically think of this. Why am I pointing at the screen? Think of this right here as the black values of your image and think of this right here as the white values of your image. And as you drag this line up, you're going to see it start shrinking and getting rid of the blacks and then the grays and then the light grays and then finally the whites. So if you just put on like 0 0.01, wait, is my number lock not on? There we go. Uh, oh, it's not going to let me do that. Wait, point 0.1? 0 0.01. Boy, it really doesn't want me to touch that. So what you can do, if you want to do really small numbers, um, you can drag, see how you can drag this bottom number here and it goes do, 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 big chunky numbers. Um, you can also grab this top one here and then you can do really small numbers. So if you do a small number, you're just going to get the very dark values, which when we captured this is just the black values of our document. So that'll go ahead and get rid of them. So you can hit OK. And now we just have that. Now it's still not real. It's just, you know, BPR geometry here. If you wanted to make that real, you could go up here to our geometry, convert BPR to geo, and there you go. Now it's not real nice, so let's try something. Let's try morph target. We're going to store morph target, and then we're going to, because I think if it just, let me see if this will do it. Yeah, it's not going to do that. Let me think. So if I have an object and I want to apply a, let me see if I can do this too. Let's go down. Let's go, let's get a little bit more resolution of the thing. So we'll go to geometry. Cause I, so here's what I can do. I can also take this mask to a polyplane, store that information, store a morph target, and then do a morph diff. But I'm trying to do it with surface noise. Hmm. But with the morph target, I want to get it double-sided. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about that, too. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Um, cool. Yeah, two and a half months in Zbrush. And uh, if you guys missed it, um, I do have... Where is it at? Where is it at? Um, recording. Zbrush training 2018. Exported. I have... Uh, 250 videos uh, and apparently 23 hours worth of content uh, but week zero is going to go up on YouTube for free so there will be a kind of a quick start guide to kind of get you ramped up in ZBrush not everything obviously I can't fit everything in ZBrush and, but it'll be like five and a half hours 52 videos so that'll be updated on my YouTube as soon as I can sit down and uh, do all the ancillary work like the thumbnails and all that stuff we'll find some time this weekend I think uh yeah, there's that. And so here's surface noise, convert BPR to geo. And I'm trying to think, I mean, you can clean this up if you want to, you can hold down control shift and you can go and you can slice this stuff off or you could just clip it back if you wanted to. So I can take all this and we can go delete hidden. So it's not impossible to get something decent, but that's not quite what I was looking for here. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, let me think. So uh, we'll do the other method. So we're going to go ahead and grab another polyplane, drag it out, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, go down to geometry. You guys know the drill. And then if we go through here, see how I have a smooth modifier turn on, I hit divide, it kind of rounds those corners out. If you don't want that, turn off smooth, divide, 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 divide. Um, if we go to BTS, transpose smart mask, we can grab an alpha. And we can grab any of these alphas, really. And then hit uh, W to go into draw mode. Hit Y to go into transpose mode. Hold down control. And then with transpose smart mask, you're able to hold down space bar and move this around. So that's actually a pretty useful feature if you want to just drop a mask on there. Um, however, you can also... Oh, 
Uh oh. What I do? What I do? Um, instead of taking transpose smart mask and kind of finagling it on there, you can also go into surface noise, apply this as noise, add that as a mask, and then inflate through it, which is what I'm going to do if ZBrush comes back. Hopefully this doesn't bum out my stream. Sometimes when something goes iffy inside of here, it kind of Well, anyway, how's everybody doing in the comments? Um, da, 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 da. Gina asks, are the chisel brushes new recent ad? That was in ZBrush 4 8. Speaking of, if you feel like it, if you go to my YouTube channel and then go to playlists and then go to ZBrush 4 8, what's new? Wait for it. I will link you here. Copy this to here and to here. Uh, if you go to that playlist and you go down, so there's the new Git, well, new. It says ZBrush 4R8. We're in ZBrush, so that was the last release. ZBrush 4R8 R3 or R4, I forget. And then now we're on ZBrush 2018.1. If you scroll down, there is, we go into vector displacement maps, and then <clears throat> somewhere in here is chisel brush, stroke pause, uh, yeah, somewhere in here. My brain's not really finding it, but there's vectors, place, mesh, brush, magnify, 2D alphas. This is really bugging me. There it is, chisel continuous stroke, uh, number 21. So check that out, and that'll uh, that'll do a little bit better. I mean, we can talk about it too if you want. Okay, hey, I'm back. So uh, you can control tap to invert this. And then, of course, we can do a deformation. And this will actually give us a lot of um, flexibility as well. But like I said, let's try this. Let's go to uh, surface, noise. We're going to grab that alpha. And we'll use our UVs. And we'll say strength, mix basic noise down. We'll go ahead and flip horizontal, and this time we'll hit OK. And now instead of applying that as geometry, we're going to do mask by noise. And that'll just drop our mask there. And now we can go through here, and there's two things we can do. If you want a lot of control, you can go to layers, add a new layer. And then we can talk about layers today too if you want. And then we can go down here to, what was I doing? Oh yeah, morph target. We can go down here to morph target. I'm going to store morph target. So now when I inflate through this thing in our deformation menu, and you don't have to inflate, you can just, uh, if you want to just move, you can just translate uh, straight up if you want to. And morph targets will still work. Uh, but if you want to, you can also go down here and inflate. So we'll inflate this up, and then we'll say, okay, I like that. I'm also going to go back to my gizmo. And then, and if you wanted to use this as a vector displacement, you could too, although... It's just going to act like an alpha, so there's probably not a lot of point to that. So uh, we got this. We got our. We're recording on our layer here. So if I like this, um, I can go ahead and unmask, and then I can click over here, and that'll go out of record mode. So now I can go through here, and I can make this more or less in my layer, or I can even overcrank it if I want to go way down or way up. Uh, but let's say I like value of one, so I'm going to say, you know what? Let's bake that layer. And down here, uh, since we have a morph target, we can go to BMO. Let's switch to matcap gray. So now we got a morph brush, and uh, we can just morph this back to what we had originally. And you can crank this Z intensity up to 100 if you really want to cut through there. Another thing you can do is you can switch, and now your morph target's kind of stored in this plane. Is my plane not perfectly square? How did I do that? That might just be a glitch. Uh, and then you can go through here and you can morph it back. So anyway, another thing you can do, we have a morph target stored. We can switch it. So we can say create difference mesh. And now when we go up here to our subtools here, here's our morph diff. Yes, I know. And then this is a much cleaner result and it's got a capped back. So that's nice. That's real nice. So anyway, uh, there's a few ways to do that. Uh, was there anything else I was gonna talk about with that? Let me see. Uh, Geo to alpha first for our brush and then morph diff and the surface. Oh, okay, that's the other thing. So. We, to create that brush, if we went down here to chisel rectangle, uh, now we have this where we can just select that geometry and create an alpha. So that way you can stack a bunch of different alphas like this one. 
In fact, if we go to BI Brush Insert Industrial Parts, with this one selected, you can go down here and say uh, Create Multi Alpha Brush out of this. So now, um, brush, 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 chisel rectangle, chisel rec two, brush insert. Oh, you know what? I think what I have to do. Let me see if I have to do this. Got it. You know what? Here's the other thing. Here's what's really funny about me is if you want to learn how to make a multi-alpha brush, right, it's right there, number 19, I'm going to have to sit here and think about it because I seem to have forgotten. So let's try this. Let's go to BI brush insert. Well, let's drag out something on our canvas first. Got a poly mesh here. Go into edit mode. BI brush insert. We're going to grab... Uh, oh, we just totally overwrote that one. Let's grab another one. I want to do a simpler one. Let's say we want to do these insert multi mesh basics. So we got all these ones sitting here. Let's go to our Z plugin. And we're going to say I am an extractor. Oh, there it is. So we'll go ahead and extract all of these to subtools here. If we hit B, create insert multi mesh, that'll go ahead and create our multi mesh here. B create multi-alpha brush, and now D, 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 D. man, I'm really going to have to, I'm really going to have to watch my own videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can show, uh, we can do, we can shadow box. Um, okay, so tablet Let's see, um, on my YouTube channel. If you guys want to know all of my hardware specs, and actually, now that I think about it, okay. Um, so I have a hardware video up here. What am I looking at? Here we go. I'll link you guys to this. So here's my workstation setup. And if I stop that, you're going to see right here is my Intuos Pro pen tablet medium um, and it's an older version <laughs> got dusty uh, so I can link you guys to that I tend to prefer the tablets because they're a little bit faster for me so I can I can very quickly because the tablet's small and my screen is large uh, I can very quickly just get around to these menus really fast it kind of stings a little bit when I, if I ever need to do like really nice fine inking work but said so I don't really I'm not an inking artist uh, I don't really notice the probably and I can always zoom in to get more fidelity but uh, I just move faster with a tablet and also with a Cintiq I tend to find myself leaning over it putting my face really close to a giant light bulb for a long time so I get bad back bad eyes uh, with a tablet I can like lean back in my chair and I can move really fastly around fastly quickly around my interface um, so that's why I prefer a tablet hey all the way from London thanks for showing up Darren um, okay did I send that yes thank you pro uh, yeah any anything on YouTube you're probably, if you're, especially if you're new to ZBrush, go to here to speed and just put me into um, lurch land and I'll go nice and slow. I still watch my own videos at 2x, but that's because I recorded them. So I can use context clues to tell what the hell I'm saying because I do tend to um, talk a little bit fast. Cool, cool, cool. Right on, right on. Uh, can I ask a bit off top question? Yeah, sure. Oh wait, is that one? Yeah, feel free to ask whatever you'd like. Here we go. Uh, curve trill brush, fill brush. I want to create bat wings, but it messes it up. Yeah. So let's. You know what? We can do. Uh, we can kind of do shadow box for that too. So one way to do that, we take our dog head, go into edit mode, and I'm going to do a quick uh, unify just to make sure it's all in the middle of our screen here. So at any point, you can go down here to Mm -hmm. Shadow box. Now, if I do shadow box on this object, it's going to replace the object with uh, masking. So now I can go through here and I can say unmask the, oops, let's go back to mask pen here. We can unmask this eyeball. And then now wherever we're unmasked is where it's going to chop through. 
So that's Shadowbox in a nutshell. Now, if you wanted to do accessories, I'm going to undo through that. What you can do is you can go to Subtool. We're going to du duplicate that off. And then under Shadowbox, we can get Shadowbox. Now, if I go to Transparency Mode and not in Solo Mode, uh, if we unmask, you're going to see I have my dog head sitting here. And then we have a Shadowbox. So if I wanted to put doggles on him, I can go through here. We can just mask uh, where this would go. And then from the front here, if we mask, and let's go ahead and hit X symmetry. So we'll go ahead and put on little doggles here, something like this. And then from the top, I want this to kind of go around his head here. And then also where these lines, it's only going to create geometry where these things overlap. So if I just put this shadow box in here, down here, so you're going to see if I get rid of it, because these two overlap, to create that shape, that will go ahead and be created. However, as soon as I introduce more shadows, it's only going to do, as like I said before, geometry where these things intersect. So if I bend this around, I have to make sure I also come through the top here. Now I'm doing a fairly sloppy job, but um, let's see, let's see. So this goes back here, which means this needs to probably come out here. And then this here. So that goes up. Oh yeah, so this also needs to come up this way. I don't know, something like this. So we have this. Oh, you know what? And if we wanted to, let's turn the dog head back on. No, I guess that's right. We can go ahead and like shave this down a little bit so it kind of fits the contours of his little dog face a little bit better. So we got the world's coolest dog here. And then if we go to shadow box, we can turn that off. And then we have geometry sitting here. And you do have poly groups here. It's not real clean, uh, but at least you can kind of go through here and uh, da -da 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 -da. sweet goggles. Now that was Shadowbox, and you can use Shadowbox to create anything. Um, if we go back into Shadowbox, I'm losing it. There it is, Shadowbox here. So if you want to, we can go out of Shadowbox. We can crank this resolution up a bit, and then we can go back in here to. Um, brush. Uh, let me see. You know what? Let's go ahead and just grab a uh, standard brush here. We're going to go to clone this off and we will say you are going to be drag rec stroke and our alpha is going to be something more interesting than that. Let's see if I have any alpha sitting in here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. BBB, any military stuff that I throw in here yet? Oh, I didn't. Oh yeah, I did. There it is. Oh, these are all lame. Lame. Okay. Well, we'll go in here to industrial and we'll say we want to do this alpha. Double click it. And if these are grayscale 16 bit, 16 bit grayscale, uh, it'll show up in alpha. If it's 8 bit RGB, it'll show down in your textures. If it ever does do that, for example, if you accidentally have an alpha that's saved as an 8 bit RGB, like this thing is. You can always go in here and you can say make alpha and then it'll go ahead and make it an alpha. Uh, but anyway, so we got this thing here. So now we can hold down control drag and then we can, um, oh, you know what? We don't need a standard brush for that. We just need this. So we go ahead and drag this out and that'll go ahead and create this. And then from back here, we'll just go to mask pin without the alpha and we'll say we want it to be masked only in that area. So that'll control this. And then if we want to, we can go, you know what? I want it to be like that. So now we got a bunch of different slices here. So you can make bat wings like that. Oh, you know what? Speaking of bat wings, let me show you this. This is a fun one. Wait for it. Okay. So live stream highlights. I wonder if I have this saved somewhere. Way down here at the bottom. Um, um, um. Let me see. I'll link you here. So these are past live stream highlights. I've been real bad about keeping it up. So, or keeping up with it. So it's, so it's probably, it's probably not real super updated, but, um, all right, you know what? I'm going to have to find this another way. Let's do a search of my channel for membrane. Marvelous membrane. 
however I go for. This might have been, no, this is a highlight. So I'm going to go to this one. This is a fun one. So basically what I did was in ZBrush, I took these bones and I animated, well, I didn't animate them. I just made, uh, well, I guess I did animate them. I made different uh, layer morph targets or blend shapes, which uh, I can go into in a minute. So what I can do in Marvelous is I can put a piece of cloth between those bones and attach them. And then I can animate those in Marvelous Designer so I can get this stretched kind of feel. And then as I animate them down, I get different wrinkles. And then when I go into ZBrush, I can load those in as animated layers. And then I can just use this as a way to, you know, if I have like a bone structure. So I can drag this bone. Let's go here. I can drag this bone structure out. And let's say I want to fit a membrane right here, like a little bat wing. Um, you can, I can go and grab my animated animated tool and I can just grab these layers and I can kind of just stretch out those things to kind of get the membrane stretch that I want from Marvelous Designer into ZBrush. So then I can just position this and use that as a bat membrane. So let me go ahead and link you to that. That's a little much to go over right now, um, but you guys might like that. Yeah, that's my dog Pepper. And we just got a new dog, Whiskey. Um, and she is six months old, so going on seven months now, and man, she's, she's a big reason of why I'm super tired right now, but she's a good girl. So, um, hey, thanks for showing up, Van Gore. So anyway, uh, that's, that's another cool way you can do a membrane. Uh, but we're going to talk about curve tri-fill and maybe some other ways, uh, to get this document, so she's not doing, uh, grabbing documents anymore. Let's go ahead and go to our document window and I'm going to hit W size, new document, which I can save changes now. And that'll just go ahead and fill up this entire space with a document here. So for example, let me see if I have, you know what, we're going to modify. I'm just going to keep bugging this dog today. I'm going to take this dog and we're going to go out of perspective mode. Um, you know what might be kind of fun? Let's do this. Let's go into our dog here. Well, we have a dog sitting there. I'm going to go and grab a Z-Sphere. Go into edit mode. I'm going to hit X to go across X symmetry. And then we're going to go down here to rigging. We're going to select our mesh and we're going to select that dog. And then for this rig here, what we're going to do is we're going to hit E and we're going to scale this down. I'm going to position this, you know, we'll do it like a human. We'll start with the pelvis here and I'm going to just drag this out. So these are Z spheres and Z spheres are super powerful for a lot of different reasons. One of them is you can use them to rig. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to put some bones in this doggy. Hit Q, hit Q and then W to move these things. And just like everything else, if you just do a search my YouTube or go to Pixelogic's um, training channel, they'll have that as well. Um, Z sphere basic usages and rigging and stuff like that. But um, I'm going to go through here and we'll do this and then we'll come out to the side here. Oh, here's a, here's something you can do. If I have transparency ghost on, you're going to see the Z spheres completely just disregard my mesh. So I can go through here and I can do this type of stuff. Now, if I turn off ghost transparency and then we just have regular transparency, if I hit Q, and then I drag on this one, you're going to see it's going to snap to my mesh automatically. So you can use that to your advantage. Like so, and then Q will go up. And honestly, I prefer Ghost, but just want to let you know that's available to you. So we'll go here to the cranium, and then we'll go ahead and put in a few neck joints here. And then you could even put in, and if you hold on Shift, that'll snap it to the previously sized one. So now we can give this a test. So let's go uh, bind mesh. And then now if I go in here and I hit rotate, I can go through here and I can rotate these legs out. So we can go through here and we can also save poses if we want to under layers. If um, we make a new layer, you're gonna see uh, we can store poses in here. So that's cool. So let's go ahead and record this pose. Although, you know what? I'm not sure if this is ready for prime time yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, kill that layer. So let's say we wanna rotate this up a little bit and then rotate these legs here. I am sorry to do this to you, doggy, but we're going to turn you into a bat. So we're going to go ahead and how does a bat work? Hold on. <laughs> this is where 
reference comes in handy. So, uh, looks like the arms go out, and then it goes to a hand, and then the hand fingers kind of make all the little things make the membrane stick. So we're going to skip the fingers for now, but what we can do is when we hit W, we can actually move and we can scale the stuff up. Um, and honestly, like this rig's actually working r astoundingly well. Um, but if you ever needed to, you could say, you know what, I need to make a change to this thing. So I'm going to go out of bind mesh, it's going to snap me back to my bind pose here. And then if you ever need to add helper joints, you can go through here. Like if you need to maintain volume, because when you're painting weights, like in a traditional rigging program where you have bones and then you go through and you um, bind your mesh to those bones and then you go through and you paint weights to have more or less influence per joint, um, you can do the same thing in ZBrush by adding more joints. So you're going to see if I go through here and I drag out some maybe some rib bones here. So we'll go ahead and move these out. Let's go scale these down a little bit. We'll move these out and I'll let Q. And I'll move these down. Um, so if I wanted to like maintain volume in his chest or use it as like a corrective blend shape or a helper joint, uh, I can do that as well. And you can also add more um, divisions in here if you need to get a smoother fall off between if you're doing like a very bendy spine or an octopus tentacle. Um, but yeah, so we can go here and then we can rebind the mesh. And now you're going to see when I rotate this, this is a parent-child relationship. So as I move, as I rotate this, and you can rotate either just the joint itself or you can rotate the entire bone and hierarchy so if i rotate this back and let's rotate his hips forward here you're going to see uh and i have these helper joints here these maintain volume or if i need to i can also use these to do a little bit of corrective sculpting without having to go in and sculpt so that's something to keep in mind uh, but you know what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and hold on alt and just delete that joint and really, I don't even think I needed helper joints. So I'm just going to go through and alt-tap those ones to get rid of them. And then we'll hit bind mesh again. And I'll rotate this back. And I'll rotate this forward. Oops. Let's rotate these hips forward. There we go. And then he needs to look forward here. So we'll move his head forward here. And if you needed to also, yeah, we'll talk about this later. You can actually add, um, Paul Gabriel does this. You can add joints around these joints so you can get like clavicle rotation a little bit better and I guess we could put in more joints for that but we'll go ahead and ignore that for now. So we got this and it kind of goes like he's got a crook of his arm here and let's go ahead and stretch this out so we're going to hit this and this and this. And if we were storing this as a layer we could do multiple poses we could do all sorts of cool stuff. So here 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 can be where we want our bat wing to go. And whoops, let's go ahead and move his legs out. Oh, also, you're going to see his tail is kind of warping here. So what I would do is put a chain down his tail, and then those joints, <clears throat> excuse me, and those, those joints would uh, be weighted to just his tail, and then his legs wouldn't be affecting his tail. That's a that's probably a better example. <clears throat> yeah, cool. Uh, Z cut into button placing to Z add and Z sub. Uh, Z cut. Z sub and Z cut have no effect on the blank canvas. They have the same effect on the play. Most paint tools and all three buttons are turned off. Z cut. Tools remove depth information from the canvas. Adds depth information to pixels. Specify scoops. Z cut creates holes or tunnels. When applied to 3D objects. I don't know. We'll give it a shot. I haven't used that yet. Uh, so let's see here. Okay, so we've got our dog here. And then we'll go to... Uh, but thanks for asking that question. Let's... Uh, who, who asked that? Let me see. Um... <laughs> no way. And there's another whiskey out there? Yeah, we got her from the shelter. And she her name was Whiskey, so we just kept it. Um, eagle would be more realistic, creating feathers. You know what? Uh, speaking of feathers, on my YouTube channel, well, there's here. I'm going to give you... Damn. Hmm. I do have feathers somewhere on my channel, but I'll send, I'll send you to an even better resource here. So it's going to be called ZBrush Guides. G-U-I-D-E-S dot com. 
This is Pablo Munoz Gomez's page. And if you go to his tutorial ebook section, uh, he has feathers and ZBrush right here, so a guide to creating feathers. This is great. So let me link you guys to this, and we'll talk a little bit about that with MicroMesh. Uh, we'll add feathers to this guy. So, okay, give me a second. So we're going to go down here and we're going to say, okay, I like this. So we're going to go to adapt to skin density of zero, 1, and then dynamesh resolution, we're going to turn that to 0 because I just want my original dog mesh. Uh, we can hit preview. Looks good to me. So we're going to hit make adapt to skin. And up here we got skin z-sphere. So now we were, t we were talking about a brush, um, brush curve tri-fill. So you can go through here and then this one is going to be, it's going to snap to your mesh here and then wherever it doesn't, snap or actually let's go here to curves stroke mm -hmm -hmm. let's open up all these and then we can turn on snap so now this should snap to our mesh and then wherever we let go oh it's not going to well let's try going through here boy it really just does not want to well that's not a huge deal i mean you can go through here and you can make your profile then you say okay i like that thank you and then you can rotate this back here. Oh, and also your brush um, size dictates how wide this thing is, but of course you can always go back in after the fact. And now this could be your bat wing membrane, like so, or dragon wing or whatever you want to make. Um, there's also another thing we could do. If we go down here to Z-Sphere, and let me see if I can just clone this off. Yes. Okay, so we're going to clone that Z-Sphere off. We're going to go back into our dog, and then here... Under Subtool, we're going to append that cloned Z-Sphere. So now with the Z-Sphere here, you can also do, let's uh, also let's go ahead and just split mass points here. So that's going to split these wings into their own Subtool. That's under the Subtool Split menu, by the way. Uh, so we have a dog here, and then we have a Z-Sphere armature beneath him. So what we can do is we can go down here to Z-Sketch, go into Edit Sketch here, go into Solo Mode, like if we want to do... Well, let's just see if we can do this. So I'm going to go to sketch here. And if I just go and sketch on here, and let's turn transparency off. Actually, transparency, edit, sketch, rigging. Oh, so let's delete the mesh here. OK, yeah, I don't want to be in rigging mode. I just want to be in edit, sketch mode. So now I can go through here. And under Edit Sketch, I'm going to start sketching through here. And you're going to see I can use uh, Z-Sphere Sketching to kind of go and add a sketch. And we can kind of just sketch across this bridge, like so, to create wings. If you want to see a better example of this, underneath, I believe, Project. No, wait, might be under Tool. Tool Z-Sketch. There's a Z-Sketch bug by Joseph Drust. There we go. So you can actually just go back and forth and just use Z-Sketching. So if I hit A to go on a unified skin, you're going to see that's the result you get. So you can kind of close that up. Um, but for the most control, what I would probably do, instead of doing all this jazz, what I would do is I'm going to go ahead and delete that Z-Sphere rig. Oh boy. Let's go back into ZBrush here. What I would do is do a ZBrush uh, Z-Sphere retopology. Because that just gives me, I can go through and I can plot my points, I can create a thickness, and then, um, and don't worry, this will be easy. So, just a real quick one. Tool, um, Nick Humanoid, Nick Z Humanoid, and then we're going to go, let's put a wings between his arms, so subtool. And you know what? Let's also, let's make him creature -y. yeah. And it'll make his joints all knobby and gross. He's like a little creature, dude. So. Little, little bad arms here. Now, um, so if we want to, and you know what? Also, let's hit R, and we'll just go ahead and mask out just his arms here. We'll reposition his old gizmo. And we'll do a camera-based, if we can, just kind of non-uniform scale. LSIM. There we go. So now I'm going to append a Z sphere, Z sphere, X symmetry, scale this down, oops, scale it down with E, transparency mode. I'm just going to hide this thing so it's out of the way. And now I'm going to go way down here to topology, go into edit topology. I like to use 
Metcap Pearl. I used to have that saved. I need to put that back down there. There it is, Metcap Pearl, darker gray, transparency off. And now I can just go through here and say, okay, I want bat wings that connect, you know, down his back here. And then maybe out to his wrist. And then maybe up his arm here, like so. And then I can go in here to here. And I can hit W to move these things around. So this will give me plenty of flexibility. And I can get exactly the geometry I want. And this one we'll just go ahead and cap to a triangle here. And then if we want to, we can go through here and we can just go across like so. I can move this one out. And then this one here, uh, we can just cut across. And then one more here. And the cool thing is, even if you don't like this topology, not a big deal because zero mesher, as usual, is going to come to the rescue. I mean, this isn't terrible topology. This is about what I would want. I would probably want to clean up this triangle. But let's say we like this. We're going to hit A to make our adaptive skin. Ew, gross. What is it doing that? So we got to go here to adaptive skin. By default, Dynamesh resolution is going to be on. Let's do density of one. And now if we go out of preview mode, you're going to see this is our wings. Make adaptive skin. Uh, our Z-sphere we don't really need anymore. If we go to append, skin Z-sphere, we'll go ahead and delete that. So now we have skin Z-sphere. Um, let's see how this works. ZBrush or Z Remesh does a usually a pretty good job. Um, if we go to wait for it, Z Remesh geometry, <laughs> Z Remesher, uh, we'll do same adapt size down to zero. It does an okay job. Let's do double. Hmm. I want to keep this. Let's do this. I'm going to go through here. Oh, that's another thing too. When you had your Z sphere, there was a. Let me see Z sphere Z sphere. When we had our Z-Sphere here and we were under um, Adaptive Skin and Topology, under Topology there's a skin thickness, so you could have just had an extrusion already ready to go. Or you can simply drag this out on your canvas. We can go under Z-Modeler Brush, BZM, and then you can hover over this, Q-Mesh, all polygons or polygroup all, and you just pull out a thickness here, like so. There we go. So yeah, this, this topology is not really doing it for me. So what I'm going to do is go down here to zero mesh again. Let's say keep groups smooth. Oh, no, it's freeze. Keep groups, smooth groups down to zero. Same depth size down to zero. Oof. Oof, it really doesn't want to. Let's see if we do this. I'm going to do a crease. Subdivide this up. because I might just need to add more resolution. Okay, that's better. So this, if I like this, I'll go ahead and hold down Control Shift, isolate that, we'll go ahead and delete hidden. And now, uh, if we want to clean this up a little bit, which I kind of do, we'll go to Insert Single Edge Loop, we'll hold down Alt, and we'll just get rid of every other one of these things. Boop, boop. Okay, so now we have uh, newer, new and improved wings, and now we can go through here, Q Mesh Polygraph Ball, and pull this in. Uh, be careful though, because when we, <clears throat> when you make an adaptive skin, if you get under display properties, double is going to be turned on. So if we went through here and like tried to deformation inflate, you're going to see why is it deflating? Turn this off, you're going to see these normals are flipped. So flip them, and then, and that was actually probably because I Q meshed in. But now when we inflate, we can inflate that up. And now you have dragon wings or bat wings that you can go through and do any of that with. Uh, okay, I seem to be a little bit behind on the comments here, so I apologize if we get behind. Also, uh, as is my usual thing, uh, I might have to leave a little bit early today because my computer's getting worked on, so nothing major, just something. So we'll see, uh, but I may be cutting this shorter. Let me see if I've got that verified. Hold on just a second, sorry. Okay, so. Alrighty, alrighty, caught up, caught up. Uh, da -da -da -da. All right, side effects, thanks for showing up. And uh, this will be up on YouTube, my YouTube and Pixlogic YouTube and also their Twitch. <laughs> well, yeah, I agree. This is just, because here's the thing, when I'm talking about information, I get, it's not that I get bored, 
but I get afraid that you guys are going to find it boring because I kind of do the same thing over and over again, uh, but in different ways and different, uh, and I know it's new to some of you, so it's not new to me. So when I find something that's not new to me, I try to rush, through, I tend to rush through it, but uh, I'll try and slow down a little bit. Um, yes. Okay. So we're good. And if I missed anything, I apologize. Um, correct displacement map to work in Arnold is UV mapping good enough for displacement map. Yeah. Ooh. Displacement maps and getting it to work in external. There's a lot of ins and outs. So like if you go over here to your Z plugin and you go over here to your multi-map exporter, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in these displacement map options. I'm not a displacement expert by any means. I do video games and displacement doesn't come up all that often. So I'd have to research that. Oh yeah, we're gonna check out Z cut into. So let's see what that is. I'm gonna embarrass myself this morning. Make polymesh 3D. Um, brush. So, okay, so in the release notes, 2018.1, there's something else new that came out. You know what? I think I did a video on it, didn't I? <laughs> I don't even remember my videos that I make. Uh, oh, yeah, we're also going to talk about feathers and micromesh. So let's do that first real quick. We have a mm, plane. Make polymesh. Uh, we'll go ahead and keep Mac hat pearl. Let's go to geometry. We'll divide this up a little bit. Control D. And we'll mask out a little feathery thing. And then we'll control alt tap to sharpen that up. And then we'll go through. That's good enough. Hit control W. Isolate this. We'll go ahead and delete lower. Geometry modify topology delete hidden. Sorry. I'm going fast. Um, and then if we want to smooth these borders out, we can go over here to masking. And then we can mask our border. And we can you can grow that if you want. You can control tap to invert that. And then under deformation, you have polish by features. We can just polish it up or open circle and just tap it. And that'll kind of smooth that out. Then you can go through here with your snake hook. Uh, I like to use move with the move accu turned on so that we can just kind of pull out the points here. And this is just one of very many ways to create a uh, feather. I wouldn't even really suggest doing it this way, but while we're doing it the easy way here, I'm going to crank my lazy radius up, which is under stroke, lazy mouse. And we can go down the middle here and we just give, and I'm going to keep these low because what I'm going to be doing next is populating these feathers here. So if we go through here and we just kind of indicate some detail, you know, you know what a feather looks like. So let's say this is our feather. So out of edit mode, hit control N and because it is dog day on ZBrush. We're going to hold down control, go into X symmetry, and we're just going to ma mask the back of his head here. We're going to go down here to fiber mesh. Go to modifiers. We're going to preview some fiber mesh here. We're going to crank that max fibers down. We're going to crank that length up. Maybe not that much. And also we're going to change that coverage. So we're going to thicken these up. There we go. Um, also, if you want to go to the width profile, you can really thicken them up. And if you want to, there's a scale root and a scale tip applied. Uh, let's go ahead and change both of these down to one so I can control it just with uh, this curve here. So if we want to go from like, like kind of like a feather, although here's the thing about feathers. If we're going to be using this one, this has a built-in thin to thick to thin. So if I go through here and I make these cards thin to thick to thin, um, it's going to shrink our feather even more. So really what I want is to reset this curve and then we'll just make these flat, just flat like hair cards. Um, yes. Also, let's go down here to our base color and we'll go ahead and turn that down to zero. So we can just kind of see what's going on. So I'm going to again change our coverage down just a bit so I can see a little bit better. So we're going to turn these into feathers. And then our length will turn down a bit. And then our max fibers will turn down a bit. Okay, so we're going to put feathers on the back of this dog. Let's see that coverage up a little bit. Here we go. Um, oh, you know what else we're going to do? We're going to crank up these. So see how if we turn, if we hit BPR, It'll render out if I go down here to our BPR settings. You're going to see it's going to give us four sides. It's going to 
uh, subdivide it twice so we get a s nicer result. However, I really, um, I don't need that many sides. I just need like two sides. Um, so now if I hit BPR and render, it'll just render out cards. And then also segments I'm gonna crank up so that these can kind of fall a little bit more and they're kind of starting to twist. That's because the twist is set to 18, set that to zero. And gravity is kind of keeps pulling these things down, which is okay um, if we crank gravity up or to nothing, it's just going to sit there and float, but it's also camera based. So if we crank gravity way up, it'll fall down. Or if I turn them upside down or her, this could be a girl dog. Ah, it's a boy dog. And then we'll take gravity and we'll just crank that up. The gravity is going to follow the camera here. So let's do a little bit of gravity here. And now, uh, for example, if we go in here to texture and we do like a star, and then we hit render. Now it's going to render out those cards. Um, you can also convert BPR to Geo if you'd like at this point. But what we're going to do is uh, we don't want a texture applied to each one. You can bring in a picture of a feather with alpha. If it's black and you have transparency set to one, it'll go ahead and make that transparent around your feather. You can turn on anti-alias. You can do this. You can convert BPR to Geo and then you have a bunch of feathers. However, since we have a feather geometry sitting out there, what we're going to do is say texture off. And if you guys know anything about Geometry, Modified Topology, there is a Micro Mesh option in here. So if you choose Micro Mesh, uh, you, can do, you can do a feather. Now it's going to tell you you need to turn on Micro Mesh and Render, Render, Properties, Draw Micro Mesh. So now when I hit Draw Micro Mesh, oh, you know what? We need to apply this first. Let's undo that. Turn off Micro Mesh. <laughs> Duh. Okay, so we have feathers here, but it's still a preview. So we need to accept that as geometry. And now when we go to our subtool here, we have our fiber sitting here. So now at this point, you can go BG, you can like groom here. And I can go through here and you can like groom these feathers if you want to. Um, but the important part here is instead of it treating every single one of these as a micro mesh face, because what micro mesh does is go in and look at the faces of your object and replaces each face with an object that you decide. But if it's a fiber mesh, which has a root and a tip, how it treats this geometry a little bit differently. If you go to micro mesh and grab that feather now, it's going to go root to tip. So you're gonna see we have a little faint white outline. So if we hit BPR, it's gonna replace that geometry with feathers. Now the feathers are kind of thin. So let's go back to our feather here. And we're going to fatten that thing up. Now we're gonna go back here. And then we're gonna hit I think we might have to reload it. I'm not positive on that, but there we go. So now we have feathers out there. Uh, if we like that, again, geometry, convert BPR to geo. And now we got a bunch of feathers. And I think these are these treated as, you're going to notice under auto masking, we have auto mask fiber mesh. So it has the root masked and then the tips not masked. And it looks like when I converted BPR to geo, we lost that functionality. This is just geometry. It, totally has no recollection that this was a fiber mesh. But that's another way you can do that. Whew! Everybody good, everybody good. Very nice. <laughs> Hipster arms. <laughs> um, cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Which pin tablet can, tablet can I choose? Hoya, Huion. 1060 plus are we coming to us 20 team. Um, I, for me personally, and everybody else may have a different opinion. I've only ever used the Intuos line. So unfortunately I can't weigh in on if anything else works or doesn't work. Um, so yeah, um, if you if you are on a budget, I would say these things are pretty bulletproof. I remember in college I had an Intuos like first series one with had the serial port. And I used that all through college in the first couple of years of my career. And I mean, I ate dinner on that thing. It was just a big piece of plastic. I mean, I would assume that the newer, uh, this thing's been going strong for as long as I've had it. So they're pretty bulletproof. If you can get a used one, maybe, um, that's not a deal breaker, like some things, some electronics. Um, 30 gigs of extra zebra for cleaning up it takes too long. I need a Z tool, Z pre R viewer. What you can do is, so if you hit the comma key and you have, uh, you can see you have tools in here. Um, so let's say, let's just do this. I have, okay, so I have a folder I was working on. If you guys want to see the making of Sci-Fi Pistol series, this will walk you through. You know what? So you can go through, 
the sci-fi pistol series and it's like the making of this pistol, you can also go to my art station page and all of my YouTube stuff is a little bit not nicely organized, but there's a little bit more information in here. So for example, if you do the boot tutorial on YouTube, and you click on this, you're gonna see here's the boot tutorial, and here's all 18 videos on how to make this boot. And uh, this boot is from a little piece off this commander dude that we made. So this was made in my CGMA class many terms ago. So just kind of going through here and concepting this guy out and refining him all the way to final, and then eventually, not during the excuse me, not during the class, but I'm eventually going through and using Painter to kind of um, do that. We can look at him and sketch back if we want to. But anyway, um, like I was saying, if we go to ArtStation here, <clears throat> uh, you can go through and on the boot tutorial, sorry, this is a really big model. He's got a lot of, wait for it to load in here. Corporal. So he's a corporal. My wife kept calling him Corporal Bill. He used to be Commander. Uh, I think that's what I had him named, but then he, she named him Corp Corporal. So we made him an Italian Corporal. Uh, so he's got the insignia here, and he's got all his cool little stuff. So this was all completely made in ZBrush, 100%. And then the, the boots from the boot tutorial <clears throat> are here. And then uh, we went through and painter and we painted his skin. Looks like I got a little bit of cleanup I need to do on that one. It's pulling in the wrong AO map, it looks like. Oops, amateur hour, sorry. Ah, uh, this is all done in Marvel's Designer. And then you can see it's got like mud caked on it and it's got a little text on there and all these little details and explosive. Although that should probably be in Italian, right? Mess that up. Are these? Hmm. Uh, anyway, so that was that, that guy right here. So you can check him out, but as I was saying, under the boot tutorial on my ArtStation page, I have not only just the, the videos you can watch, but also stuff like this. You can click this, so you can actually go through, and this will be like a little breakdown, in case you're interested. Um, I guess I can link you to that here. More information for you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so anyway. We wanted to say, I got a bunch of Z tools I want to look at, so I need a previewer. So I'm going to take this um, shortcut right here. I'm going to copy, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have this sitting over here, and then I'm going to bring up another window, and I'm going to go to ZBrush 2018. So C, on a Mac, I'm not sure what it is, but something like C, Program Files, Pixel Logic 2018. We're going to go to, oh boy. <clears throat> We're going to go to... What am I think? What am I looking at here? Uh, Z tools. So here's my Z tool thing in my light box. So if we go over here to a corresponding Z tool folder, I could put a shortcut in here. Oh, I do have a shortcut to the ship. Dang it! Could have just used that. Uh, anyway, so we got the pistol here. So we're going to do right click, drag over here. We're going to say create a shortcut. So now, if I go through here and I hit the comma key, and I hit the comma key again. It's going to bring back my tool section, and now you're going to see in here I have a pistol shortcut that I can double click on. And then all my Z tools should show up. So here's a Z tool preview. Um, it may not be great, but uh, at least it's going to preview something for you. <clears throat> so you can use that to your advantage. Uh, or you can just copy. You don't even have to put a shortcut. You can copy it all directly into that folder, but a lot of people like to keep their C drive nice and clean. Okay, um, okay, let's go out of edit mode here. So we've talked about the, f oh yeah, the cut. All right, so cylinder 3D, make poly mesh 3D, and then we have a Z cut. Z cut, cut into, Z, yeah, Z cut buttons to trim out. Hold on, I'm gonna figure this out. Okay, so there's a tutorial here. Some tools will produce the same action for Z tools you cut, while this will produce a general rules you use different actions. Z cut is similar to a Boolean operation which allows you to use a 3D object in order to cut a hole into another 3D object. Simply put, when you wish to cut a hole, use Z cut. Let's try to simply draw a sphere 3D in the center of your canvas, and on top of that sphere, draw a cylinder 3D and reposition it to look like step two. And Please load the images using the ZBrush attachment. Oh, okay. Um, 
of course I can't see these images. Uh, after you've drawn the cylinder and repositioned it, activate the transform move. Okay, so let's give this a shot. Let's say we want to do the sphere, make polymesh 3D. Yeah, so I'm on the forums here and I can't see any images because I need to load them using the attachment function. Um, see, so is it D. Simply put, when you wish to cut a hole, if you wish to try to just sphere in the center of your canvas, on top of the sphere, draw a cylinder 3D and reposition it to look like step two. Okay. Uh, after you draw the cylinder, reposition it, activate the transform move with the W mode and try Z cut. Okay. Um, I'm going to say if I draw a cylinder on there, does that mean insert a cylinder? Mine's grayed out. I don't know. I'm going to have to research that. Now, here's the other thing. Uh, if you wanted to do this, you can go ahead and do split hidden. So now this one, I'm going to have to figure out why I can't view images on CBR Central now. Uh, so we got this cut out. If you go over here to Live Boolean, now you can go through and you can just cut. So we can hold down Control and we can drag out a copy. Uh, one thing, let's turn on Polyframe here. If we scale this way down and then scale it back out here. That was something that was new in uh, 20, ZBrush 2018. If we hold down control and drag and then let go of control, we can drag out copies. And then, uh, so then I'll just put them here. And then with our live Boolean, of course, you know, these are live Boolean, so you can just do that. Now, uh, what I would probably prefer to do in this situation is take this to have a little bit more control. I would go down here to Array Mesh. And I would go ahead and turn on array mesh. I like to use the transpose functionality because it's a little bit faster. So I'm going to go out of gizmo mode and we're going to just tap. Uh, oh, I guess we're not. I guess we're going to move the transpose line this way. And then we can say, I want to move uh, copies this way. And then I can say, I want to repeat however many I want. So you can use the transpose line to kind of do that. Let's repeat this less. There we go. So now that we have an array mesh, I can always go back and I can modify anything because it's just an instance. So at any point, if I wanted to say, let's go into solo mode here, polygroup, poly loop, like so, and then Q mesh polygroup all, and then go down here and we'll say bevel edge, oops, bevel edge loop complete. Now we'll get bevels on there when it cuts through. And it's all still instant, so we can just turn that off or on as needed. Uh, it still takes a long to load some ZPR files. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Z projects can get awfully um, weighty, because yeah, if I save this right now, if I went to File, Save As, it would save all this stuff. But if I'm really only interested in saving this, that's when I go to Tool, Save As, just to keep things a little bit lighter. A little bit more manageable. Oh yeah, so we were also going to go through my... So now this... Um, this is like a relief sculpture. So there's a couple different ways to do relief sculptures. We've talked about some of these before. So if we wanted to do a relief of like a human... Let's go to Tool. And, you know, if you wanted to Z-Sphere rig this guy, he'd be a good candidate. Um, or you can just go through here and you can just like mask and transpose. Oh yeah, why? There we go. You can just mask and transpose this guy to pose him out however you'd like. Um, if you wanted to make him a relief sculpture, you could go out of edit mode and you could make him into an alpha using this destructive method, which we kind of talked about. So you just make him an alpha, or you can take his geometry and convert him to an alpha into a brush. Um, you can also, if you want a little bit more control, like say we wanted to do um, polymesh 3D, scale this down. Let's go ahead and turn this into a dynamesh here. Um, and then we want to, let's just make this guy into an insert mesh brush. 
I wanted to like do a three quarter view of this guy on a coin. You could capture with an alpha and then drag him out or all the other stuff we've already done earlier in this um, this morning. But I'm going to go to B, create insert mesh, new. Then let's we'll go to the cylinder. And then this will give us a guy. And then if we wanted to do, a, again, a three quarter view, you can just do a three quarter view. And then I'm going to reset, hold on Alt and reset this, and then we'll scale this in. And then here is a three quarter relief, so you can bump it out more, bump it out less. Now this is going to give you undercuts. So it might be better to capture the alpha and then just pull it out so that you're not getting any sort of undercuts like this. But you can apply this, you can just dynamesh this together. So <clears throat> to explain this, let's do a three quarter view. And let's also maybe turn on perspective. We can capture this as an alpha. Yeah, let's just do it this way. Because this way, I don't have to subdivide this to put it into a brush. I can just subdivide or do a dynamic subdivision. Go out of edit mode. Go to, boy, I'm already starting to lose it. Wake up, Mike. Ugh, I need my caffeine. Capture this alpha. So here's our alpha depth grab. And now if we go back to our poly mesh cylinder here, we can go ahead and do hide point and then geometry modified topology delete hidden. Hide point is under visibility. You can do hide unmasked and then geometry modified topology delete hidden. So now we have this, we'll go ahead and subdivide this once, get a little bit more geometry. And then we'll go to our brush. Now we'll just go to our standard brush, clone that off, drag rect, grab our depth grab. Z add, let's turn off our lazy mouse and then turn our focal shift down to negative 100. Oh, and we're only getting the middle of his body. All right, let's do this. Document. Resize, zoom out. There might be a way to under the um, alpha options here. Hmm, 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 hmm. I'll have to think about that. Uh, but anyway, I'll go ahead and grab a three quarter view real quick. Uh, create, transfer, grab doc. Maybe this one will work better. There we go. And then even in this case, <clears throat> what I do, BT, transpose smart mask, like we did earlier, D grab, hit Y to go into transpose mode. Now I can hold down control and I have a little bit more control because I have spacebar. Invert that and then we'll go down here to deformation inflate. And again, add layers, add morph targets, all that good stuff. And then you can add that so you can kind of do relief sculpture like that. Probably how I'd approach it. And then you would just go through and clean up those edges and stuff. Um, but really for like this sculpture in particular, and I don't want to show it because it's going to flag YouTube as inappropriate adult content, but it's basically just a human figure against something. I would just say, take that human figure, s smash it in there, dynamesh it, and you're pretty much done. I wouldn't overthink it. Document. Oh boy, my voice is starting to go. <clears throat> yeah, sorry about that. Um, I'll research that today, and then um, I'll do a YouTube video on it, and I'll put it on the. I'll tag it onto the end of the Intro to Z Brush. Um, or I'm sorry, ZBrush 2018. What's new? Speaking of, if you are new to ZBrush or you're old to ZBrush but you haven't gotten into 2018 too much yet. There is uh, Intro to ZBrush 2018, What's New? And this one's got a bunch of videos. And this one's got 56 videos. And then, oh, there's the Unmatched Mesh Center button. So in 2018.1, if you weren't aware of this. So, uh, let's see, document, W size, new document. No, um, Polymesh 3D. 
hit W. So we have our gizmo here, and let's say our gizmo's off the screen. All you really need to do is hold down Alt and then just, you can just bring your gizmo back into view on your object. But if you don't like doing that, there is now a button you can make for masking. And uh, go to Unmesh Mesh Center, so you can assign a hotkey to that if you want to. And then just click that and it goes to Unmesh Mesh Center. Yeah, when Z cut his button is pressed, painting operations cut holes, painting operations cut holes in the models that are on the canvas, but not in edit mode. Z cut is not available for sculpting. Okay, so if that's like a, hmm. So what that means is I got this cylinder here, and if I drop that onto my canvas, I can go into like, say my simple brush, we can add an alpha. So if you haven't used it yet, there's a lot of 2.5D functionality in here. And you can also go through here to these 2.5D brushes and you can say, um, mm -hmm, eraser brush. So you can kind of go through and you can kind of erase stuff um, like this. And you can, you can erase a hole through something. Now, again, it's not sculpting, um, but it is 2.5D. So what we can do is we can hold down the tilde key. We can move this around. And then I can say, let's go into, actually, you know what, let's clear canvas. Let's do this right. This will be a fun one. Uh, so document, we'll turn up proportional again. We're going back to a 1024 by 1024. I know I keep going out of that. Turn off proportional, come on. Resize it, yes. Uh, zoom, <clears throat> document, zoom out. So for example, uh, we can take a ring, drag it on our canvas, go to edit mode. And then if we drop this to our canvas, uh, it just dropped to our canvas. And then we can hit W and now we have this gizmo. So we can move this thing around. We can move, scale, rotate. We can also do shift S to store a screenshot or a snapshot. And then if we want to, we can hold down the tilde key and we can start making tiling canvases here. So we go to the middle here, and then we grab another object here, Polymesh 3D here, go into edit mode. And now I can just use my navigation to kind of do this, Shift S, Shift S. So we can do that. Uh, go out of edit mode, grab, grab the tilde key, and then we can go grab one more thing. Our trusty uh, sphere. So I got a sphere here. Go into edit mode. And then we can like drop this here, shift S, we can make a smaller one, make a larger one, make a smaller one if it's in here. And then we'll go out of edit mode. And again, tilde key, we have a tiling document. So if we go to alpha, grab doc, control and declare canvas document, W size, new document. We say changes no. <clears throat> so now if we take our, or take a polyplane, go to edit mode. Make Polymesh 3D. One way to show this off is a surface noise. Um, oops, I always forget. So you grab, export, desktop, tiling, alpha, tiling. We're going to do strength all the way up, mix basic noise all the way down, flip horizontal. And now if we move out and we do our alpha scale, you're gonna see as we scale this, it's just a nice tiling map here. And then be like, just like before, we go into edit, we can change this offset here to get rid of our document here. So now we just have floating geometry and you can do this to make really, really cool stuff. Buildings and spaceships and all sorts of neat stuff. Mm. <clears throat> Hey, Seacol, thanks for showing up. Um, Vanquer says, Mike, I was asking myself if you play any games. Uh, you work in the industry, do you play yourself? Um, the last game I played was Cuphead, and that game kicked my butt all over the place. Um, what else, what else, what else? I do, I do, I don't play a ton of games, or if I do play games, it's mostly for research. I spend most of my time, let me show you what I spend most of my time doing. <clears throat> Go to my drive. Uh, where's a good one? I guess CG. I spend most of my time filling up books worth of notes for work. <laughs> so design fundamentals, ZBrush notes, Griebel notes, yeah, Houdini notes, uh, if kit organization for different joint types and engineering 
mumbo jumbo. So most of my time is spent doing that. Um, I do play games, but it's more of a, and this is going to sound terrible. It's more of a reference type thing where it's like, okay, I need to know how this game does this or how they solve these problems. Um, it's not, it's still enjoyable, but yeah, I, I mean, the last game I really got into was like Fallout 3, uh, before that World of Warcraft, before that GoldenEye for the Nintendo 64. I mean, I've played a lot of games, but um, not just not a ton. And if, in a lot of times too, it'll just be like Twitch or YouTube if I just need to look at for a real quick reference, because mostly what I'm doing is creating assets. Um, and it is valuable to play games while you're in development to make sure that, you know, you're staying abreast of what's new and, you know, how other companies are problem solving in context in a video game. But it's just been a long time since I've been able to sit down and be like, okay, I'm going to devote a hundred hours to this game because that's a hundred hours I should have been, not should have been, I could have been, and I am devoting to, uh, becoming a better designer, becoming a better ZBrush artist, becoming a better, um, you know, cr content creator as opposed to splitting that too much with playing video games. And again, it's not a, I, I work with people who play a ton of video games and also do a ton of good work. So I'm just not able to do that with the way I split my time up. I guess I'm not smart enough to do that, but they are. Uh, but yeah. Uh, why do you need to make it an insert mesh brush? Oh, for the, um, you don't need to, you can append it and then just move it into place. I like to use insert mesh brushes just because it's easy for me to just drag on and it's already placed as opposed to append, transpose, scale, put it into place, rotate it, and then I'm ready to go. With insert mesh brush, I can just drag and I'm split it off and I'm ready to go. Yeah, and that's only the CG portion of my notes. This isn't even, that's just one folder. I got a lot, a lot of notes. Um, if I update to 2018, will I be able to keep the PAV custom menu? Um, you know what, to play it safe, I would say, yeah, if you're doing, if you're on ZBrush 4R8, um, don't keep that PAV custom menu, but on my Gumroad or QBrush page, I don't think I'm lying about this, I go down to my intro to ZBrush files, and I think I've updated this. I have, I think I updated it for 2018. So I have a 2018 compatible version of, and anybody else out there, if you guys want this, um, let's see, I'll link you guys here. So if you guys want this, it's, it's free. So you can go to my Gumroad page or my QBrush page, and um, you can just download, hold on. You can just download those files. Or, but I mean, also, um, if you go to my YouTube channel here, um, I'm gonna have some new videos, updated videos on this, but even in the meantime, if you go to the Intro to ZBrush part two, and these are dated videos that I'm replacing slowly. Uh, if I can find it, Intro to ZBrush part three. And am I blind? I think I am. Oh, load more, jeez. Okay, Intro ZBrush Part 2. Go here, and there's a custom hotkeys, custom interface, custom menu. So check that out, and you can make your own. In fact, we can just kind of make our own right here if y'all want. Uh, the wings on my spaceship were just uh, insert mesh brushed and then uh, rebuilt. It's not insanely... Uh, not overly interesting. I'll have to look at them real quick. But um, if you were so inclined, go here to preferences. And it's so easy. It's so easy. So like here we have a path custom menu here. Um, anything you want to customize here, we go to preferences, go to enter. Um, yeah, custom UI. Okay, so we're going to go to config here. We're going to enable customize. And then now down here, remember I was saying, oh, I wish I had um, a Matcap Pearl in there. Well, I can just move this down by holding control alt. I can move these things around and now I can go into my material menu and we can say, here's my matte cap pearl. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select something else. So now that matte cap pearl is sitting out here small, I can hold on control alt and I can snap that into place. Now if I go out of enable customize matte cap pearls down here. So I'm going to go matte cap gray, skin shader, matte cap pearl. Um, also before you leave ZBrush, make sure to go to preferences, config, store config and you'll be good to go. Also under Enable Customize, we turn that on, and then we go down here to our custom UI. You have a Create New Menu. We'll call this Test. 
and now we have a test menu. So we open these up and then close them down. Um, it should, um, let's go ahead and just drag this over here. It should resort them enough. Oh, you know what? It's not capitalized, so it's putting it at the end. Uh, but if you capitalize it, it'll put it in alphabetical order. Um, so now we have a test menu up here. So I can drag anything into this test menu even. Uh, let's go ahead and drag this over here, actually. Even a custom sub palette. Control Alt, drag it. And then you can drag whatever you want to in here. You can say, oh, you know what? I love using wax modifiers. So I'll just drag that in there. And then the drag spec in there. And then also under our, I don't know, stroke menu. We also like to do dot stroke a lot and maybe drag dot. And you can reposition these as well. Just hold, hold down control alt and just drag it up, drag it around. You can put in spacers in here if you want to space things out. If you're happy with this, uh, you can add another create sub palette, hold down control alt, drag it on, and then you can go, uh, I like opacity and I like monochromatic. Now, if you ever like, oh, you know what? I don't like monochromatic. Control Alt, drag it off. And now we got this and yeah, we got this. Um, at any point, you can hold down Control Alt and tap these and you can say, and then Control Alt, tap this menu and say, so now we have this all set up. So now we can go to our preferences here. We'll say, turn off enable customize. We have a new test menu, config, store config. And now we can hold down Control Alt and then we can assign a hotkey to test. So we'll say Alt. Mm, I don't know. I'm trying to think something I haven't used yet. Seven. Okay. So now whenever I hit Alt Seven, this little thing pops up, and you can have these things sub menus open or close or whatever. And you'll notice uh, if we go back into Enable Customize here. Whoops. Um, I did a sub menu under my main menu, and then I just did a sub menu under that sub menu. If you want another sub menu under your main menu, hold down Control Alt, drag it onto the main menu, and now you have another sub menu. So now you can like throw buttons in there, name it, and now go out of Enable Customize. So now we have this, and then we still have our hotkey assigned. So there we go. Um, 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 um. Cool. Uh, and yeah, so the ZBrush spaceship. Let me see if I have Tool Pixel Logic Shadowbox Matchmaker. Oh, there it is. Ship shortcut. And then here we have ZBrush. Uh, here's a bunch of like little pieces. And then Feedback 04, I think, is where I have the main thing. Refine. Houdini Skimmer. I'll use that one. So this one, uh, and you guys might like this. So this was all made uh, completely in ZBrush as a test for the Houdini workflow. And if you guys are interested in that, all over my YouTube channel, there's a ton of stuff on like going from ZBrush to say Substance Painter and making cool stuff. So for example, we'll go to live stream highlights here. If you scroll down, you'll see some robots. That was always a fun one. So we made a bunch of robots in ZBrush, then we throw them into Substance Painter to get them all painted up. Or you know what? Maybe I'm lying. Maybe that's under live stream full episodes. Also, this book, this little book right here, um, is also another one we did at that book in ZBrush, and then we took it into Substance Painter. And then if you scroll down here, well, I don't know where it is. Got Pickle Rick. Hmm. Well, there's robots on here somewhere. But anyway. To go back to my YouTube channel here, there's a whole section on going from ZBrush to Houdini to an engine, and that's under uh, Houdini Game Dev Toolset here. So we start out, you know, we can just watch this, I'll do some commentary. So this is the end result of the ship right here, dropped into a <clears throat> level made in Houdini procedurally. So essentially we use GoZ to go from ZBrush uh, into Houdini using the Game Dev Toolset here. So here's ZBrush, and then we're just kind of setting up our ship. And we have sub tools over here with names, and then uh, we can bring it into Houdini and auto voxelize to push stuff together, auto game res, auto UV, um, auto pack, all that good stuff. And then let's go to the ship part here. Yeah. Oh, also, also, so for like live booleans that leave you very sharp intersections, um, you can fix that in Houdini as well in the renderer. You can just bevel those edges out or soften those edges, and then when you go to bake, it'll give you a softer transition. And then you can go through here and you can paint your. 
density that you want on your geometry and you can put in your seams procedurally and then it just gets dropped into well, let's see if I did that right okay these show up correctly and then subscribe to my YouTube channel so as far as how the wings were made these were all just shapes so if I go to subtool here and we hold down shift and we turn off poly paint um, yeah and this was a pretty old construction too normally what I would do and this is it, boy, this is just noisy. Now I'm, I'm looking at it again, going back. I just filled this thing up with stuff. Um, <laughs> let's see if I have anything that's not completely destroyed. Yeah, it's all decimated. Hmm. Um, I, I mean, really, it's just about making the basic shapes here and then using live Booleans to cut in and then using that live Boolean to duplicate off and then make these shapes and bevel it out and then using more live Boolean. So it's really primary simple shapes. And it, it is like most of these shapes are um fairly simple so edit mesh here and then initialize q cube and then we'll unify this so like this wing shape here was mostly like a z modeler brush bevel is complete and then control alt let's go across x symmetry here that's essentially the main part of that one shape and then i'm just going to go you know into my crease tolerance crease level of three smooth subdiv of four let's drop that crease tolerance down a little bit there we go so essentially that's the main shape let's do cre uh, and we can put in control loops here if we want to tighten those up a little bit so we can go to like insert single edge loop we just tighten that corner up and tighten this corner up here and then at this point it's a brush insert booleans here and let's go ahead and clear this out a little bit so uh we'll hit m and we'll go ahead and say, <clears throat> I'll put in a little detail here. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a split unmask points, put this below, go into cut, turn on live Boolean. So this is our cut mode. If I don't like that, I can just go through here and I can, whoops, wrong one. You can go through here and you can just swap these things out. So it's like, you know what? I like this better. So now we can go through here. We can pull this out. And then again, like we did before, I can go, and you know what? I'm going to turn off dynamic for these temporarily or we can turn on dynamic i just don't need a smooth so divide it to four so we'll say two increase level of one yeah we don't need to increase level on these things we'll say two so we've got this thing here and then let's say i want to rotate it around and we'll scale it down here if you ever want to see this geometry a little better just turn on polyframe and now you can see where it is or you can also go into solo mode if you want to make edits here so we can go here and then we can kind of push this in and then we can go back down here to array mesh beep boop beep bop w y go in this direction this many with some repeats like so and here's something interesting you can do um turn off light boolean here so at any point you can take <clears throat> an array mesh and convert it to nano mesh and now these things are just polyplanes with a nano mesh so you can see if you turn off show placement that's the plane sitting there and then you have these things so if you go here and edit mesh now we have these meshes we can go through here and we can edit so we can do like <clears throat> excuse me insert uh, let's do bevel edge loop complete and then we'll do q mesh plug your ball and then we'll go out of edit mesh and now that's been updated and then you can go through here and you can change like the width or the length or offset you can do random if we want to do variants like you know I want to rotate these things slightly there we go um, you know what I haven't tried yet let's make things like boolean yeah so now you get some slight deviation on your rotations as opposed to array mesh where you can do that but you might have to stack too many um what are they called you have to stack too many stages uh, how good are the auto everything features in Houdini um, as good as you make them um, by default there may be some instances where you have to either go through and dial in parameters a little bit more or dig deep and create um, addendums or entirely new systems within Houdini to really do what you want um, but the functionality is built in it just may not be available to you just in the 
dev tool set, you might have to dig a little bit deeper. Or it's, like I said, change the parameters quite a bit. Um, and as far as perfect, I mean, you can always take polygroups. Like if you know exactly, for example, where you want your UV split, take your polygroups into uh, Houdini and then just use your polygroups. Just like um, if you are going to like say, it's got a live boolean here. For example, it's the exact same thing. If you did this, I think he's got polygroups. Yeah. So if you want UVs exactly where uh, Nick Z has them split up, and go check out Nick Zuccarello. Super nice guy. He made this model. I used to work with him. So if we go over here to Z plugin, and we go down here to UV Master, and we got symmetry. It is symmetrical, right? Yeah. Uh, we got polygroups turned on, and then we can say unwrap. And then we can say fun. And then there's the UVs. And so, yeah, you can use those polygroups to kind of dictate where they get um, applied here. Yeah, and it does help a lot. Um, for example, hmm, actually, let's see if we can load that up here. It's been a while since I've been in there. Streaming. We were doing like a medieval zombie thing, and I had so many big dreams for this thing. Here we go. So we had this like book of uh, dastardly whatever. So we made this thing, and see how crummy it looks? I mean, it's not crummy. I mean, if you look at it back here, it's like, oh, it's a cool sculpt. And it really, it didn't take us that long. We were just kind of messing around. Um, but if we go here, I'll load this up. And a lot of this too. Oh, this was a cool one. So if we go here and we all tap these pages here, we go into solo mode. Yeah, let me see. I think I converted these particular ones. But um, if we wanted to do those pages were just made using nano mesh or array mesh. Shoot, I forget. I mean, you can use array mesh, convert it to nano mesh. Yeah, just like we did. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do poly mesh 30. And we're going to convert this to a Q cube. And then we're going to say, you know what, let's do a Q cube of resolution of one. And then we're going to say Q W. So here's our book page. So we can start out with array mesh if we want to. Um, like this. So we can say array mesh, beep, oh, deep, W, Y. We want to go here. We want a lot of repeats. So here's my book pages. Now, I want variation within those. So we want to do convert to nano mesh. And then within these nano mesh here, we want to do some like width, length, height variances to get some interesting looking clumps. And then we can say, we don't need to show placement here. So there's my new pages. There's kind of thick, like a kid's book, but you can also consider these like, oh, you know what? They're kind of like clumps of smaller pages. That's what they'll, that's what they'll read like from back here. So not too noisy. And then um, you can go one to mesh under inventory, or you can go, if you have a bunch of nano meshes here you want to mess with, you can always go to geometry. Convert BPR to Geo. And now if you wanted to do like some of those things, oh, and the planes are still in there. So I'm gonna hold down control shift and we'll just get rid of those planes here. Geometry modified, topology delete hidden. Um, if you did want to, we can do a quick auto groups, poly groups, auto groups here. You can hit control and tap any one of these. Maybe. Invert that. So now you grab any one of these things. Oh boy, it really doesn't want to. Here's what we can do. Hit W, or hit Q, go into move brush here. And we're gonna go to, under brush. Auto masking, masking polygraph up to 100. And we can move these things around. You can also hit W, control shift, and grab any one of these, and then you control tap and then invert that. So if you wanted to move around one of these things, or you can also do mask by polygroups, or you can do topological and move these things around individually. Anyway, what I'm getting at is if you're so inclined, you can like one of these pages got pulled out. And then if you wanted to, you can go through here individually and say insert single edge loop. So you can add a little bit more geometry where you need it. So if say you wanted to like bend this thing around, you could do that. Now, if you wanted to do like, 
a noisy page or a really wrinkly page, what you can do is you can isolate this, you can split it off, or I suppose we can just do this. Let's say I'm going to go to insert multiple edge loops. We're going to pull along here, and then we're going to pull along here again just to add subdivisions. We can go ahead and control shift A, that's visibility grow all, hit control W all one polygroup. So now with this one here, we can isolate it, we can go down here to deformation, you can turn on a noise just to kind of warp, warble that. So now you got a page that was like left, uh, it, got, it got wet or something. Or you just do it to all your pages if you want to. Cool, everybody caught up, and again if I missed any comments I apologize in advance. Um, I'm going to have to leave pretty soon. Um, in fact, if we're if there's no more questions, I'll go ahead and head out. Cool? Alrighty. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Um, I'm going to try to be on my stream this Thursday. Yeah, I can do it. This Thursday on the 2nd, I'll be on um, PavMic on Twitch and then my YouTube channel. So, anyway, thanks, everybody, for showing up. And... Uh, any tutorials on the human figure, male or female? Yeah, I'll cover that in just, uh, just the last thing before we head out. Thanks, everybody. And we'll also do heart eyes. Cool. So, um, if you go to my YouTube channel, it's a little bit dated. I'll have some more, I'll have better anatomy stuff coming out soon. But in the meantime, if, you, if you're so inclined, go to my live stream full episodes. Ooh, there's two places for this. So live stream full episodes, and then Pavwork 01, we go through and you sculpt this guy. Also, under my, hold on, I don't know if there's links in here I don't want you to see. Um, here, I'll link you here. So this, what I'm streaming on Pixelogic's channel now, it goes to my Pavlovich workshop. So let me link you guys to that. Here, here. Um, so under this, if you scroll all the way down, we do, uh, I think the very first one was like an anatomy breakdown-ish. So we go through and we use bones and muscles and kind of start fleshing out some anatomy stuff. But again, I'll have better anatomy stuff coming out soon. Not soon. Why do I say that? Maybe someday. <laughs> cool. Alrighty. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you next time.